are these people? This is our extra story for tonight. Um, we'll make this quick, somewhat. Uh, but we kind of, you were kind of like, yeah, about this story. But yeah. I felt it's kind of important somewhat to kind of talk about in light of another story that you brought up yeah. a couple of weeks ago, which connects with this. And mm. I think we've had more of a deeper discussion regarding this since then. And I think we could probably share, you know, with you guys with our fam as well as you guys can maybe talk about this in the chat uh but as you guys know probably know by now on monday uh macklemore released uh his new single heinz hall uh that is in name. that's the name of um hamilton hall that was occupied at columbia university last week mm. uh that's what the students renamed it when they occupied it uh, and obviously, Heinz uh, Rajab is a six-year-old girl who was killed by the IDF uh, when she was trying to be rescued, I think, several months ago. So, um, so Macklemore named dedicated you know, this single that. in memory, to, well, kind of dedicated to her, but also to the occupation of Hamilton Hall. Um, mm. Obviously, due to copyright, we cannot play the video. And I can play it for us. Put age restriction on it, so yep. we will surely get hit with a copyright strike on that. So please go and watch it on YouTube if you have not done so already. Yeah. But that being said, we have the wonderful, comparable Caitlin Johnstone, who does her thing and did an opinion piece. Uh, that her husband, uh, what's her husband's name? Um, I forget. Tim and Foley. I sh- Tim Foley, Tim Foley, that's right? it. I, yeah. I hope so. I, um, I should be easy. Do you know what Foley, have you ever heard of the word Foley? The yes. actual, like, term Foley? It's just very funny that he's doing Foley work as a Foley for Caitlin Stone. <laughs> right. Um, it's just kind of ironic. So, um... um so Caitlin did an opinion piece regarding opposing Macklemore's single that uh, Tim Foley uh, and he does this. If you go to her, uh, go to her uh, website, you know she, her husband reads her articles. So in yeah. case you want more of an audible experience to her articles, you can listen to him read them. So yeah. we're gonna listen to him read Caitlin's article regarding um, this the Macklemore single mm. and. We will continue to talk more about it. Opposing the war machine is cool again, and the Empire is getting nervous. American rapper Macklemore has released a single titled Hinds Hall, the name given to Columbia University's Hamilton Hall by anti-genocide protesters in honor of the six-year-old Hind Rajab who was murdered in Gaza by Israeli forces. The artist says all proceeds from the track will go to UNRWA. The song, with its accompanying video, is such a scathing indictment of the U.S.-backed destruction of Gaza that Google-owned YouTube promptly age-restricted it. Macklemore attacks Biden, the brutal police crackdowns on protesters, the conflation of anti-Zionism with anti-Semitism, U.S. politicians, and the Israel lobby, with lines that will haunt you for days like, the Nakba never ended, the colonizer lied. This marks the first really mainstream artist to take on this issue in their chosen medium with a track intended for widespread circulation. It probably won't be the last. Opposing the Gaza genocide is quickly moving from the right thing to do to the cool thing to do, which is a major problem for the empire. The empire can handle being on the wrong side of an issue. It has all the media and mainstream culture manufacturing institutions on its side, which allows it to frame public perception of that issue in a way that quells dissent. What it absolutely cannot handle is a critical mass of young people deciding the imperial murder machine sucks and that opposing it is fun and makes you cool. That's when dissent takes on a momentum of its own. As long as opposing militarism and imperialism is just the morally correct thing to do, it will always be a marginal position in an information ecosystem that's controlled by the powerful, because simply being on the right side of an issue has little natural magnetism of its own. But the instant it moves from being about morality to being fun and cool, it suddenly starts crackling with energy and drawing in huge numbers of people who normally wouldn't be that interested on their own. The Empire has no answer to this. Seriously, how can a bunch of boring Empire managers in D.C. and Virginia hope to compete once that happens? What are they going to do? Win the young back by writing another Wall Street Journal think piece? Have Netanyahu rap about how Zionism is rad while Tony Blinken plays guitar? They got nothing. (laughs) <laughs> this crackling excitement behind an anti-war protest movement hasn't happened since the 60s, and the Empire had to retreat from Vietnam with its tail between its legs and dramatically restructure Western civilization before it could recover from it. And all the Empire managers who work on solving that problem are dead and gone now. The people working on it now have never had to deal with anything like this, which is why it took them by surprise. The Empire managers of today have only ever encountered protests against the war machine that were either very small or short-lived and easily diverted. This one's only gaining momentum seven months in. And the Northern Hemisphere's summer hasn't even started yet. 
I guarantee you the swamp monsters are scheming very hard to try and shut this thing down before summer starts, because the kids are going to have a whole lot of fun at their expense if they can't. Thoughts, Reef? Well, I think it was Neil Neil Diamond, I do believe, that said he can hear the, you know, drums of summer. So mm -hmm. uh, that's in that Kent State piece he did. Um, you know, so that's what I'm worried about necessarily is how much are they going to crack down on a lot of this? But I have seen a lot of talk about how this is being the cool thing now and trying to dismiss it because it's the cool thing, right? That people don't know what they're actually protesting. They're just there to be cool and get laid and whatnot. So, you know, I think that is well, a problem you know for what? the empire. I, 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 yeah, I mean, I mean, there is going to be, and we talked about this last week, there is going to be some people who are just in it, you know, for the funsies or whatever, you know, yeah. but, but the problem is like, the way it's being framed and smeared in the media is, you know, these are pro Hamas protesters, they don't know what they're talking about. And yet, yeah. I barely see any mainstream media having people on to kind of talk about it. Like, right. You know, have these people have some of these college students on to kind of talk about why they're there, you know. But basically, what we're seeing online is, you know, a lot of hate for these college students who, you know, are protesting. And many of them, I would argue, if not a fair, overwhelming fair majority of them, know what their, uh, what their demands are. Um, and to kind of go along with that, I mean, we talked about how Macklemore spoke at the pro-Palestine rally in D.C. that I went to back in November. Yeah. Um, and now uh, he has come up with the single regarding uh, the movement. And I think, oh, I think I would, don't want to say overwhelmingly, but I would say a fair majority of people that we know in the space generally liked, you know, the song, but it did yeah. get some hate. Um, and I can argue for those people. I understand the hate. You know, given Macklemore's history, you know, given, you know, like, obviously he has been claimed to, you know, steal, you know, like, like, you know, styles from, you know, rap, you know, black artists, especially. But, you know, yeah. that being said, I can also make the argument that every white yeah. music artist basically steals from black people. Everything's, and everything's black derivative. Artists. Now. You're. You're, every right. artist is stealing you know. from all the artists they've listened to before. It's not, right? you know, like... So, yeah, I think people had, from what I did see, a few that I did see had an issue that it was Macklemore who yeah. did this. Versus, like, if it were to say, like, Hendrick or Drake, who I, we also know is kind of hot right now, giving their right. beef, quote-unquote, that they're having right now. Yeah, but no I one think else that is, would have been a lot more. No one else is talking about this. I know of maybe four MCs that are either, mm -hmm. you know, like an MC Abdul, Low Key. I think there's another one that hangs around with Low Key MC something or other. I can't yeah. remember uh, his name, Jesse unfortunately. Jet. Jesse Jet, of course. Um, there's a few people. Uh, Jess, there's another Jesse I saw that was talking about Netanyahu and War Isn't Murder and stuff like that recently did a Boeing piece. but like these are heavily independent like barely have an audience you know right like not saying that in a bad way but you know like it's it's hard for them to get the reach because of what they talk about clearly you know right. and I think so, Macklemore is just finding know, that out but right you know you know but I think especially on YouTube as I said earlier like youtube put an age restriction on it so yeah it, it, you know like but as i said to you i think as we were prepping for this story last night is this song going to win a grammy probably not is this song going to get massive radio play also probably not you know right but the idea that macklemore found a lane that as of this point no mainstream artist has even attempted to do yet I mean, say what you want about Macklemore, but at least he did something, something, you know, towards, you know, towards, you know, uplifting 
especially college students right now who are protesting. And the idea that the other thing was, oh, this seems calculated, you know, just given the timing, you know, in terms of, you know, like, oh, this is kind of taking in the way of, you know, Drake and Kendrick. That was the other thing. And I'm kind of like, well, well, we're going to get into why. Well, I really wasn't even into this beef. Mm -hmm. um, many of you know, I got um, my cousin got married over the weekend. And actually, my cousin very briefly was kind of into it. You know, just as he was yes. getting married, and he was asking me about it. Like, what do you think of all this? I'm like, I don't fucking care, because it's like, <laughs> yeah, no, it's but it's just like, it's just two rich like, assholes and I, like, arguing, right, over nothing, yeah. really. But well, uh, we're gonna I get to them the in a minute. In terms I think of, that's the thing with it. If you've been following ahead. it, there's a lot more. It's a lot more than just like arguing. There's a lot of like CD mm -hmm. music business crap behind it, including talks about Lucian, right. who we've talked about, talks about Clive Davis, who we've talked about, talked about, you know, like a lot of these like, uh, you know, things that are connected to Vanguard and the private prison system and how they've manipulated hip hop and like and, and they've, they've installed people that they're comfortable with and get blackmail on. You know, I think that's part of the thing. You know, I think it was Hendrix calling, uh, you know, Drake a colonizer, essentially, for how he's acting mm -hmm. in the music industry. So I think that's part of it. You know, this Toronto kid used to play on Degrassi, you know, like Silver Spoon from the start sort of problem. So not that I'm sure Kendrick hasn't made his sacrifices, but you brought this this tweet. Um, well, it's actually a thread uh, that I think really it, it, it speaks to what I had been thinking about very well. Uh, so this is from at Julian uh, Keel Rose, um, who tweeted, y'all let Macklemore drop a song like this before you, which referring to, I think, generally anyone in hip hop. Yeah. Uh, but I think especially probably black artists, especially. Right. Um, so he continued, oop, so he continued, I swear, Ninja's been saying hip-hop was revolutionary. That's why so many of these ninjas are culture warriors, cu culture vultures, right? Because they don't comment on social issues. Some of the biggest, most historic social issues happening, multiple genocides, it's crickets from your real rappers. Folks are signing to protect a bag, do that make them a sellout or what? Talk to me. Um, anyway, shout out to at La Russell CG for actually saying something months ago and shout out to at underscore Art Coop for organizing artists to be grounded in justice movements. Uh, embarrassing for both them rappers, again, for referring to Kendrick and Drake, I assume, that I've just made, that had had ample time for their beef, LOL, especially because 40 has been posting about Palestine nonstop and it seems like he really cares. But these people are corporations in and of themselves, so that's rap, I guess. LMFAO. All of you, it's not our fight, people. Nothing about you revolutionary either, LMAO. So I don't care about what you think is or is in your fight. Some of y'all mad I tweeted this. Who the F is supposed to hold a line for what hip-hop is supposed to be? We keep saying nothing about our rappers saying nothing, and after a while, people forget what this ish could be. It's already happening. Nah. If you all stop saying hip hop's revolutionary, or you help try to make it that way, artists should feel ridiculous for A, not learning enough about social issues to be proficient, B, not learning, and then also not donating slash amplifying, C, not using art to further movements. And if you read this as shade towards Macklemore, it's quite the opposite. Hip hop is back this week, though. Um, I can't believe I'm still going on, but I woke up mad. <laughs> um, you don't become a mega millionaire off rap if you haven't gone commercial in some way. You don't become a mega millionaire off rap without watering down messages. You don't accumulate wealth without some form of extraction and hoarding. People have lost track of the fact that all entertainment industries decide they could sell stories of Black suffering 
so long as it didn't ultimately point people to actual resistance. Yep. Simply talking about struggle is not in of itself resolutionary, and that's the plot folks have lost. And I can add, probably in our space, sorry, not sorry mm. to say that, that also applies to us, you know, just talking about revolutionary matters or things that should matter is not the same as actually doing it and being a part of the struggle. So I really like what that tweet in particular, I think just as it refers to anyone who has a voice or has a platform to make your voice amplified, to elevate social causes, to have people actually do something about it. Yeah. It makes a difference when you're out there, you know, making those moves yourself versus just talking about it or singing about it or rapping about it, but then not, you know, going all the way in terms of the things that you are talking about. Um, but anyway, and people don't want to accept or recognize this because they don't want to believe their favorite artists are also part of de-radicalization and commercialization of hip-hop, because that would mean we as fans are also a part of it. Surprise! F it, I'm still going, it's, if it's not our problem, okay, well, they're also not challenging people in power about shit happening directly to Black people in America, are they? Cop City, Biden giving you, giving 100 million to cops, these fuck ass black mayors, medical apartheid, where the F are they? Let's be clear, they're not participating in any part of a struggle towards revolution, LFAO, be serious. The best we got, we get out of these ninjas is to vote for the segregationists. If you think your issues are separate, that's on you. Why aren't these rappers supporting the issues you think they are yours either? Right. And I think that's a good point. Mm -hmm. I haven't heard any rappers as of late. Now, granted, I don't listen to hip-hop like that now, but I haven't heard of any um, hip-hop artists who have talked about Cop City, who have talked about what's happening in Haiti, what's happening in Congo. What the, you know, like we talked about last week, the Morehouse students brought to their president in terms of, like, why are you having Joe Biden on our campus to uh, speak at our commencement? <laughs> when he hasn't done shit for black people locally. Like, see, I, they brought that I have, to him. I've had heard rap and songs about Cop City and about, you know, whatever, but I follow the shit. I'm in it. You know, we're in Twitter every day. Well, let me, let me rephrase mainstream. Let yes, me mainstream. That's what I mean. Like, and, and if you are talking about those things, they never let you touch mainstream stuff ever. You know, like, you're you're relegated to you know youtube or uh, some other platform and then they still demonetize you and push you down then if you are so mm -hmm. you know they still control a lot of the you know this has been the problem with the music industry as a whole they still control a lot of the publication of it you know and like it's only until now you've started seeing more independent publication but we've seen spotify since you're low key you've seen uh Lots of of that kind of stuff happen, so mm -hmm. you know I, I I get to some degree why it's happening. At the same time, you know, like I would like more of that counterculture to be part of that, you know, music Elevated. genre for sure. Yeah. yeah. So right. not that it isn't happening, you know, like bro, bro, you talk about the people in the ciphers and whatever they spit that shit. You know, and some of the old hat rappers that you don't hear much about, they still do that. You know, they get on mics, they freestyle about this stuff, bring up Julian Assange, they bring up WikiLeaks, they bring, they bring this stuff up, you know. But you'll never hear that outside of one or tw once or twice on the radio that someone didn't catch, you know. Like, mm -hmm. so, you know, there's a few, yeah, but I like, where's, it's just, it's where's just Toby? the idea of... Where's Toby and Wigway in the middle of Atlanta? Where's, you know, sorry, Houston, my bad. Um, you know, like right. there's there's some people who pride themselves on talking about issues in their songs who have, haven't have touched it. So, right. you know, like, I'm not saying they won't. I'd like to see that. That'd be nice. You know, I'm sure some of those guys could go extra hard on that. You know, Post Contra, there's a few out there. But you brought you brought this from DJ Joe Nice, right? 
Right. Mm. So shout out to our friends of the show, uh, DJ Joe Nice. Uh, I saw this post on Instagram, so you know I pulled it and gave him credit on Twitter uh, for this. Um, so actually, if you scroll down, Reef, I want to read. If you scroll down, I want to read what Joe Nice said on Instagram first. By the way, follow him there. Uh, by the way, um, so speaking of Kendrick and Lamar, for those keeping score, one Kendrick Lamar is signed to Universal Music Group. Two, Audrey Graham Drake is signed to Universal Music Group. Three, the CEO of Universal Music Group is Lucian Grange, a pro-Israel billionaire and Zionist supporter. Four, Lucian Grange is a defendant in the Sean Combs, P. Diddy, Puffy, whatever his name is, court case. This just in, Kendrick versus Drake is a distraction. Mm -hmm. This bullshit takes attention away from Israel and their continued genocide of Palestinians in Rafa. It also turns down the heat on Sean Combs. If you think a fake rap beef is, quote unquote, for the culture, you might need to consider other activities. So I, you know, well, again, as I said, I didn't care for the Drake, Kendrick beef, manufactured beef as what it is. I did not know that Drake and Kendrick we're on the same music label. Yeah. Uh, you said that Drake might not be, but at least at minimum, he probably might be. I think Kendrick might not be. Um, I mean, right. Kendrick might that also might have some independent a, stuff that he pulled together. I say right, but I'm sure but... like they might have be a subsidiary of Universal, maybe yeah. possibly. So, um, but either way, and we did talk, and you talked about this story regarding Diddy and the circle of friends that he have, all of which are Zionist, yeah. um, and how Lucian Grange, you know, essentially is becoming, is essentially his lawyer to kind of cover up for Diddy right now. So it definitely does make sense, given the heat that Diddy has had, and now I think he's trying to keep a very low profile, to have, you know, Kendrick, who hasn't, hasn't put out an album in what like eight, seven years like yeah honestly about that long have him and drake go at it go at it just right. to get you know some entertainment value out of the two of them while giving diddy cover meanwhile diva one of them enough of the two i would think that kendrick would actually be because he is more conscious. He yeah. is a little better in terms of speaking to social issues a little bit, especially when it became when it came like well, around much the more, BLM era. He's much more isolated himself, right? Like right. Whereas Drake has done the parties, done the Diddy stuff, been over there, connected like connected to a ton of people. I mean, I think that's part of the thing with this is that the reason why it's so distracting is because they are talking about some real stuff in this piece. But it's all uh, ancillary to the actual, you know. It's it's like it's it's not as important as other stuff. But it's like right, you know, it's stuff that's been in the zeitgeist recently, especially with the Diddy stuff, with Epstein stuff, with whatever. But essentially, they're putting all that on on Drake as well, you yeah. know. But whatever, you know. I think there's more important stuff, which which. You're, you're bringing up here. Um, right. So, again, like, you can, you know, and I said it earlier, you know, I, you know, I got to give Macklemore some credit here. Like, and, and I'm going to say this again, because we've had this conversation regarding Oliver Anthony. Is Macklemore yeah. going to leave a movement? Absolutely not. And I, for all intents and purposes, he shouldn't lead the movement. Yeah. But, like, if you want to participate in terms of offering your art towards the cause, sure. Yeah. But ultimately, you know, allow the people on the ground to do the work. Allow the college students to do the work right now. Hopefully, and, you know, like, it's graduation season. Um, you know, folks are graduating. The protests are still ongoing. 
I can imagine over the summer it's probably going to get worse, especially coming up on the conventions over the summer. I'm sure a lot of these protests are going to be more elevated depending how things in Rafa slash Gaza go over the next few weeks. Um, but for those of you who are kind of like, oh, Macklemore doesn't have a right to talk about this or rap about this, or all, all these college students are, don't know what they're talking about, or, you know, like, they, you know, they're pro-Hamas terrorists or whatever else you want to say in to smear them. Let's listen to the woman, the mom of whose child was martyred, who, who happened to Hall was renamed after and who Macklemore decided to, you know, uh, write this, uh, write this song in memory of. Let's hear mm. from Hin Jahab's mom. And what she thinks uh, regarding send me your money. and she's speaking in send me your money. Arabic, so we'll have to uh, read the things for people. We'll have to read it for our friends who are just listening. Cool. So ever since send Hind was born, the simplest occasion had to be celebrated. <laughs> I'm burning on the inside. Wishing that my daughter was with me. So I can celebrate her birthday. A woman saw me and asked, Are you the mother of Hin Jahab? I answered her, Yes. She told me that your daughter had a hall named after her at Columbia. To be quite honest, I started crying. Because I wanted all of these movements and support to come while Hind was still alive and not after. But I was still happy about it, that there's a possibility that Hind's cause could move and mobilize people in this world. That there's a possibility that Hind could be the spark that creates change for the Palestinian cause. The night of Hind's incident, it was a very, very harsh night. Fire belts everywhere. To the extent that a tower next to us collapsed. Do you realize how intense things were? Fire and shrapnel everywhere in the house where I was residing. It was extremely terrifying. Told her to come. I told her to come to my embrace. She immediately closed her eyes and fell asleep. Despite it being a very harsh night, she quickly fell asleep. I looked into her eyes and her face. I told her, Your eyelashes are so beautiful. Now let these eyelashes, never let these eyelashes leave me alone. Dear. Never deprive me from seeing these beautiful cheeks. Your hair is so beautiful, dear. Hamod, I only want to stay alive so I can see you grow up into a young woman. I am very happy to be frank for what they're doing in many universities. But I hope that these protests do not stop until there is an actual permanent ceasefire in Gaza. We, we do not want this six-week truce. Imagine that after six weeks, you'll still have to go back to a war once again. That is very difficult. We want a permanent ceasefire for life. We are tired. My message to the whole world. Wake up. Hind is not the only one. It's not Palestine's first martyr. We have more than 15,000 martyrs who are children. Wake up now. Why are others like him still going through this? Why don't you really wake up? Not because of him, but because of the other children like him. Powerful stuff. Mm. But... <clears throat> So yeah, um, hate Macklemore all you want, but that's the person that you should be listening to. That's yeah. the person that actually should be going viral right now, quite honestly. So, but you know what? You know, pro again, props to Macklemore for giving people a lane 
to actually speak on, on this without fear. Um, and yeah, if he's doing it for clout, fine, you know, but he shouldn't, but he's not the face of the movement. Him is, you know, the, the Palestinians who are dying should be. So, you know, so make that, so if you have a problem with what Macklemore is doing, make that point, you know, this is not about him. You know, this is about the Palestinians who are dying and are continuing to die given this oncoming uh, assault, uh, which we're going to talk about in the next segment. Yeah. Um, but Ugh. anyway, um, he kind of ending on that kind of note, but I know, right? <laughs> if you want Whatever. to support us, um, um, if you want to support us uh, at what we're doing at INN, free to uh, support us on Kofi uh, at the link below, or you can use your QR code uh, to scan with your phone and give a donation to us that way. Um, please like, share, and subscribe to us. Uh, we really would appreciate it just so we can wait, uh, beat the algorithm since the algorithm um, hates us and suppresses us to high heaven. Um, so please leave a like, subscribe, and make sure to leave a comment. We do read your comments, especially since we have a small community that is very easy to. Uh, yeah. We do appreciate that, and we do appreciate your words of support. And, you know, um, and actually, I do want to say this. Uh, in mm. the, not in the, Reef and I are thinking of, you know, creating a music show where we're able to talk more about artists that do not get a lot of play uh, mm. that we want to kind of highlight. Um, so let us know in the chat or in the comments if that's a sh not one, if that's a show that you would like to see. It will probably will have to be a Rumble exclusive show given copyright on YouTube if we want no. to play their music. Um, but also, which artists do you think are really revolutionary minded that you want us to highlight and you know talk about on this potential show we don't know when we want to do it but we are kind of talking through this mm. um it's something also that we want to have possibly have jesse you know be a part of as well um so but yeah let us know if that's something you'd like to see but and we, what artists you think should be highlighted on the show once we get it up and running